A new year has arrived, and what better way to start it than with a fresh solo shuffle tier list? With MMR finally inflating, now is the perfect time to climb the ladder and claim those elite transmog sets, or even break your personal best rating. So join us today as we delve into the most recent winners and losers of the ranged, melee, and healers so you know exactly what class to pick up in the new year in order to reach your rating goals. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcap is backed by a rating gain guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the link below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. First, let's start with the ranged winners, where we have Marksmanship Hunter shooting up from the B tier and landing in the A tier position. This is largely due to the shift in the meta, which is now full of squishy cloth and leather users, both of which Marksmen can shred through with ease due to their low armor. Marksman is also strong into Restoration Druids, which are proving to be the most played healer across the board. This is largely due to Tranquilizing Darts being so powerful as it dispels their healing over time effects, as well as MM Hunters having a fantastic burst-oriented damage profile that Resto Druids can struggle to heal through with just hots. Finally, the traditional counters to Marksmanship, high armor disruptive plate classes like Warriors and Death Knights are just less prevalent on the ladder, making Marksmanship Hunters far more likely to have a good lobby rather than a bad one. Moving on, our other ranged winner is the Affliction Warlock, who are also moving up to the A tier from the B tier. Affliction is on the rise due to the rising popularity of other caster classes, which Affliction will always outdamage and out attrition due to their high consistent damage profile. Their armor buff from the previous patch is also proving to be incredibly strong, as they can now face tank melees just a little bit longer, allowing them to get their casts off before having to kite, which is increasing their output significantly. Although Affliction can still be shut down by consistent dispels and interrupts, this has become less of a problem across the board, with Priests no longer being able to constantly mass dispel and immune the backlash effect of unstable Affliction. As well as Boomkins and Ellie's being less common, allowing Affliction to have its Curse of Agony stay applied in more matchups. Moving on to the ranged losers, we have Demonology moving down to the A tier from the coveted S tier position. Unfortunately for Demonology, the increased numbers of Windwalker Monks, Demon Hunters, and Mages has caused Demonology to fall behind, as the games are too fast for its dampening playstyle to really be viable. Restoration Druid's strength is also keeping Demonology down, as they can easily deal with their pets with mass roots, as well as their hots and treants being so powerful that even when the Druid is in CC, the Demonology Warlock can struggle to score kills. However, it's not all doom and gloom for Demo, as they are still strong into lobbies with multiple casters due to their mortal strike effect, and can carry with crowd control on healers when not facing a Resto Druid. Our next ranged loser are Shadow Priest, who just can't catch a break this expansion, seemingly getting worse and worse each patch, becoming so bad in fact that they are moving down from B tier to C tier. Shadow Priests really have nothing going for them right now. Their damage is the lowest of all casters, while having to cast the most out of all of them. Their crowd control is not long enough to finish the game on their own, and since the hybrid nerf to mana, they can no longer spam purge without going out of mana. And if all that wasn't enough, they're also very squishy into physical damage dealers, which every lobby tends to have at least two of. All in all, Shadow Priests are in dire need of help. With the biggest changes out of the way, let's go over the new ranged power rankings for the new year. In the S tier, we have Destruction Warlocks, who are still absolute powerhouses right now, having huge instant damage with Dimensional Rifts and Shadow Burns, along with a strong kill window of Havoc and Mortal Coil, allowing them to set up wins on their own. Beast Mastery Hunters are also staying in the S tier because of their insane amounts of physical damage, which is tearing into all the cloth and leather meta classes, as well as having Tranquilizing Darts for Restoration Druids. Moving on to the A tier, we have Boomkins and Devastation of Ochres, who both have a strong 2 minute cooldown, which allows them to close out games in dampening, as well as having great control and sustained damage throughout the match. Elemental Shamans are also holding it down in the A tier. Despite being weaker than before due to the Maelstrom nerfs, Elemental can still deal huge damage while still remaining very disruptive. We then have Arcane and Frost Mage, who arguably could be placed in the S tier in the right hands. This is because their kit allows them to deal immense pressure with both high damage and consistent crowd control while taking very little damage themselves in the process, but it can be difficult to master all that mobility and preemptive defensive tools. We've also got Affliction Warlocks and Marksmanship Hunters moving up to the A tier from B tier. And the final A tier class are Demonology Warlocks, as they've fallen from the S tier. Moving on to the B tier, we have Fire Mages sitting in their lonesome due to their damage not quite being up to scratch, while also still having to deal with being rather frail due to Glass Cannon talent, which reduces their health. And finally, we have the C tier with Augmentation Evokers and Shadow Priests, who are dropping down from B tier because of their lack of damage, emphasis on hard casting, and survivability issues into the meta, melees, and casters. 
Moving on to Melee, as far as the winners go, things haven't really changed, with Windwalker Monks and Demon Hunters continuing to be a cut above the rest, sitting comfortably in the S tier. Windwalkers are able to create deadly setups on their own, which can annihilate just about any male, leather, or cloth user in the game, which the meta is currently full of. They also have strong enough defensive cooldowns to stay in the fight and deal high sustained damage without having to run all game like previous iterations of the spec. As for Demon Hunters, despite being nerfed over and over and over, they are still doing the highest sustained damage of any melee in the game, while retaining one-shot capabilities like their Essence Break Death Sweep combo. Demon Hunters are also still very difficult to kill outside of stuns due to their defensive having such low cooldowns, and they passively just take less magic from their tattoos for lore reasons. Moving swiftly on, rogues are also performing very well, with assassination increasing in popularity across high-rated lobbies. This is because of their fantastic spread pressure, along with their powerful mortal strike, allowing them to close out the game and dampening as their pressure becomes simply unhealable. They also have access to King's Bane, which is still one-shotting people despite being nerfed. The biggest hurdle assassination faces is its survivability, as it's still a vulnerable leather class without many defensives, yet it has a playstyle based on staying in the fight and having high uptime. Thus, it's remaining in the A tier due to its durability issues and potential difficulty with multi-bleeding. As for the melee losers of the new year, we have Unholy Death Knights, who are moving down from the S tier to the A tier. Unholy Death Knights are caught in the same struggle as Retribution and Enhancement, hitting like a truck but lacking that crucial mortal strike that really carries in dampening. With the current healer meta being plagued by Restoration Druids, lacking a healing reduction effect is huge as a Resto Druid's Hots and Treants simply heal through Unholy setups, regardless of how well it's executed. And despite being historically known as the anti-caster melee, Death Knights are being annihilated by almost every meta caster, as their anti-magic shell doesn't seem to save them very often. They also get ripped apart by the meta melees who shred through their plate armor like paper, with Death Strike not being enough to make them survive in dampening. Although it's not all bad for unholy DKs, their damage is still ridiculously high and they do synergize very well with the S tier melees thanks to Death Grip, allowing for some massive setups with Demon Hunters and Windwalker stuns and AoE damage. Okay, so to recap the melees, we have Windwalkers and Demon Hunters leading the charge in the S tier. With Unholy Death Knights moving down from the S tier to the A tier, our other A tier melees include Arms Warriors, who despite having a very overloaded kit for 3 versus 3 with great defensive team utility, they just can't quite carry the game offensively and shuffle like a Windwalker or Demon Hunter can. Rhett Paladin is also in the A tier due to their lack of Mortal Strike and their damage not being powerful enough to score kills on their own. Rets also get bullied and kited by pretty much every caster in the game, and there's quite a few of them to go around. We then have all three rogue specs in the A tier. Although they could be seen as S tier if played to their maximum potential, it's generally too difficult to pull off in a solo shuffle environment, especially without everyone ruining your DRs and CC chains. Finally, we have survival hunters who, although do massive damage and have a kit that should be suited to the current meta with tranquilizing darts, are just too easy to kill to be in the S tier. Dropping down to the B tier now, we have Feral Druids who can do huge damage if left alone, yet if targeted by any class in the game will flop over in an instant. Fury Warriors, who are essentially a damage bot that just doesn't do enough damage to be viable, and Enhancement Shamans who lack a Mortal Strike, Reliable Crowd Control, or any sort of strong defensive to keep them in the fight. Although their healing is strong, relying on self-healing and shuffle doesn't really work out as dampening stacks so fast that they quickly become useless. Finally, in the C tier, we have Frost Death Knights, who are doing the lowest damage of any melee while taking the most damage out of any class in the game. Moving on to the healer winners of the new year, we of course have Restoration Druids, who are dictating the entire meta themselves, being the only healer in the S tier. They are so strong in fact that they are currently played in over 25% of lobbies above 2100 rating, dominating right now with their powerful healing over time effects and treants. Being able to passively heal more than any other healer from 40 yards away, and being in tree form for 50% of the game, Druids can avoid crowd control while winning on mana almost every game, and if that playstyle doesn't suit them, they can also play more aggressive than any other healer with ridiculously fast Heart of the Wild Cyclones, as well as dealing huge damage with Instant Wraths and Star Surges. As for the healer losers, we have Disciplined Priest plummeting from S tier all the way down to B. Thanks to Druids and Paladins making arena matches so much longer, combined with the main stat Trinket nerfs for DPS, Disciplined Priest's aggressive playstyle simply gets dampened in these matchups as the tempo they create isn't effective enough. Disciplined Strength comes from trading cooldowns and keeping their team offensive. However, with the amount of healing restoration Druids are doing, it's impossible to brute force your way through. Disc also received a nerf on their damage some time ago, so even if they opt to sit in the back and spam out DPS globals, they still aren't going to generate enough pressure for it to be worthwhile. 
Next up, we have Mistweaver monks who are falling from the A tier to join Disciplined Priests in the B tier. Due to the slower meta, Mistweavers aren't rewarded for their short CC chains of Paralysis and Leg Sweep, resulting in them not contributing offensively at all. This means that carrying as a Mistweaver is exceptionally difficult, as they can't win the game for their team, outside of avoiding CC and healing well. Mistweavers are also really reliant on hardcasting, which leaves them vulnerable to being kicked more than any other healer. And with the rise of mages and warlocks, there's far more ranged kicks that they need to worry about. Finally, to make matters worse, Mistweavers can die easily if they're not kiting well due to their leather build and lack of defensives that can be used in stuns, which becomes a huge problem when the meta melee classes are hypermobile and are able to lock you down and destroy you in a single stun. Our last healer loser is Preservation of Ochre, who are falling from the B tier to the C tier. Preservation may seem to do a lot of healing on details, but their lack of damage mitigation results in their teammates dying, despite all of their throughput. Typically, the strength of Preservation are based on dealing damage and playing aggressive, but due to Shuffle's lack of communication and uncoordinated gameplay, this becomes very difficult to pull off, resulting in them being an inefficient healing bot instead. When it comes to healing, Preservation also have terrible range, forcing them to play very close to the fight. This often results in them not only being crowd controlled easily, but also attacked, forcing the dragon to constantly heal three targets. This becomes another issue when it comes to their biggest defensive, Emerald Communion, as it will prioritize healing the dragon first, often leaving their teammate to die, as well as it being completely useless if they get cycloned on it, which is very possible in the current meta. Okay, so to recap, in the S tier we have Restoration Druids who are dominating the entire ladder. Down in the A tier we have Holy Paladins who are stronger in dampening than the other healers, yet not quite able to match a Resto Druid's longevity or offensive capabilities. They're joined by Restoration Shamans who are also staying in the A tier thanks to their strong instant healing and defensives, which allow them to use their utility to shut down the enemy team without falling behind on having to hard cast heals, as well as Fist Weavers who act as a pseudo DPS, dealing high physical damage which allows them to crush most casters if they get a lobby with three other melee. Moving on to the B tier, we have Disciplined Priests and Caster Mistweaver dropping down the ranks, as well as Holy Priests remaining in the B tier as they simply lack the HPS to keep up with the other meta healers, despite having strong cooldowns and crowd control. And finally, in the C tier, we have Preservation Evokers, who without any damage mitigation are struggling to keep up. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where Rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skill Cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you're serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. All right, everyone, that about does it for this tier list update. Let us know in the comments below which class you are looking forward to play in the new year. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.